to celebrate the Dragon Boat Festival. I have two guests in the studio with me. <laughs> I have to always drag the both of you to my studio every time we have a celebration. David Moser, Academic Director at Capital Normal University. He is a Beijinger already, being here for 20 years. I'm an old dragon, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Older than me. And he's had a lot of already over the <laughs> right, years. Right, right. And yeah. also, Ms. Han Hua, great to see you again. My Media pleasure. and Communication Consultant, good to have you. What about that? What is the most important thing for this festival? Is it food or food for thought? <laughs> David, <laughs> I see some hesitation there. Well, you say I'm an old Beijinger. I mean, food, of course. <laughs> Without food, there is no thought, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yes, you are right. I do, I do think you have a point that the Dragon Boat Festival is one of the more thoughtful or intellectual festivals. Mm -hmm. Why uh, is that mm -hmm. from your point? Well, because it, partly because it's to uh, memorialize or commemorate mm -hmm. a famous poet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who was a Xu Yuan. Yes, Xu Yuan. Yeah. Who was a, you know, an influential public intellectual, I guess you could say, and mm -hmm. also because he was a man of principle. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, you're supposed to eat, but also think of these these uh, lofty principles. Is that what you're mm -hmm. doing, Miss Han? There are about <laughs> there, there are 24 solar terms in Chinese mm -hmm. lunar new year, a lunar lunar year calendar. But there are only four most important festivals that we're going to memorize. One is Spring Festival, the other is Tomb Sweeping Fools Festival. Mm -hmm. The third one is this, you know, Duan Wu or Dragon Boat Festival. So this is one of the most important festivals that our Chinese mm -hmm. to celebrate every year, every Chinese lunar year. And this is the, the only one festival that we are memorizing a Chinese intellectual, mm -hmm. a Chinese poet, for his contributions. During the Warren States period of time, there are so many different kinds of kingdoms, as we know. Yes. And there are different arguments as who exactly paved the way for future civilization mm -hmm. of uh, the Chinese kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, Xu Yuan is one of those that have emerged on the historic scene. So why is he that important? David, well, he test was, of your Chinese history. Uh, well, you. <laughs> I hope my students are not watching. I'm going to make a fool of myself. But no, but I'll uh, make sure they're all going to watch. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, the Warring States period. This was a period where uh, at least seven different states were warring against each other. And I, I think the reason that, that people look to Qian, especially I've seen in, in, in times when there's a, a sort of a feeling of, of national unity in mm -hmm. China that they hearken back to him because he was someone who uh, was sort of unjustly uh, criticized or falsely accused by the powers that be. He was also someone who was fiercely patriotic and mm -hmm. loyal. And he saw all around him uh, a sort of this, his, his his beloved state mm -hmm. descending into chaos and and you know being invaded by the Qin and all these other uh, yes. you know countries. Yeah. So he is he is a not only as someone who is a great poet, but his his poetry resonates with justified righteous anger. And, to provide and, you yes. with more food for thought, read from this paragraph the specific Lisa. Okay. Excerpts coming from that mm. point. All right. Mm. With crest leaves green, my simple gown I made. With lilies white, my rustic garb did braid. Why should I grieve to go unrecognized, since in my heart fragrance was truly prized? Mm. Shall I go on? Yes. yes. Mm. And to the my headdress thin, high pinnacled I raised, lengthened my pendants where bright jewels blazed. Others may smirch their fragrance and bright hues. My innocence is proof against abuse. Mm. So there you go. Very strong I'll spirit over well. there, uh, even in this very small excerpt of yeah. these yes. uh, poems. Mm -hmm. But you know, what is it about it that a poet could become the heroine mm -hmm. of an overall festival? That we see, Ms. Han, only in Ireland, in which another poet was celebrated. But um, do we see the tradition mm -hmm. of our culture that intellectuals, literacy, mm -hmm. literature yes. are very much appreciated. Is mm. that still the case today? Yes, of course, yes. And uh, very nicely, I, I think David reads about his Li Sao, and we know that uh, poet Zhu Yuan actually created a new style of the Chinese poet in, in the literature, which is called Sao style, mm. and uh, in which he created not only the four Chinese characters' verses, instead, he created the variety of Chinese right. verses. David, tell me, 
what is your sense? I mean, China developing so fast, as we all know. There seems to be also a disconnect between modern China, contemporary China, and the Asian civilization of China, even though there has been strong interest today that people have toward what we had, mm -hmm. what we were mm -hmm. before. But how much of that really is with us today? Well, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is a long time ago. China has a very, very long history. I guess you could say even even the language, you know, uh, Xu Yuan's poetry is very beautiful, but for I think for most young people, the language of that poetry mm. is far in the past. Yes, the past. It's, that's it's true. It's Wen Yan, or it's even, you know, further back. Mm -hmm. It's not easily readily accessible to, to most people. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, some of the, the ideas that he was fighting for and was, you know, uh, you know uh, so, so, in, so sad and lamenting, um, are long past. There, there are things that don't have relevance seeming, seemingly today. But I, but I think the, the power actually is in the fact that those things have become abstractions. They now no longer represent the specific battles at that particular warring states period. It's now a larger sort of abstract notion of just sim simply a, a poet expressing uh, love for his country and, mm. and righteous in, uh, in, you know, a uh, sense of righteous justice at mm. what was happening around him. And I think that's universal. That, that's not even Chinese. That could be anywhere in the world. Right? No, we see this fad going on right now here in China, which is, for example, about reading the ancient poems, Tang yeah. poems and songs yes. as well. Uh, but many wonder, are we getting the superficial uh, meanings of these poems and also where and when these poems were born? Or actually, we can have the empathy of our ancestors as they were writing mm -hmm. these poems. Uh, David, once again, I want to go to you before I go to Ms. Han. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so I think uh, the, it's true that, that people have a sort of superficial understanding. Mm -hmm. Li Sao, that poem itself, you mm -hmm. may have noticed, is very long. Yes. It's probably one of the longest poems, <laughs> or the yes. uh, first in a lineage of, of quite long poems. A lot of Tang yes. poems are just four lines long. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think that the, the importance of the of the poem is is more in the. Of course, it's a very well crafted poem, but it's mm -hmm. more in, in the power of the ideas. Yeah. It's yes. in the power of the cultural ideas, yes. and also the power of the. And he was a political thing. It was about mm -hmm. politics, and that's mm -hmm. something that, that never dies. It's mm -hmm. still active in our lives today. Yeah. Modern interpretation of mm -hmm. ancient poems, some say, could be a beautiful thing. Right. Others argue it is not necessarily going to be the case because people are just going to take advantage of the ancient literature mm -hmm. and make the points as they wish to, mm -hmm. without necessarily loyal mm -hmm. to the original meanings of mm -hmm. the poems. Yes. What do you make of these kinds of debates going on here in China? You mentioned a word disconnect, which I agree with you that there might be some moments of disconnect in the Chinese history. The disconnect maybe during the Cultural Revolution, the disconnect at some certain points, but still the spirit keeps going on. And uh, there might be some disconnect with this Li Sao style and the different explanations of the meaning of this Li Sao poem in particular, such as the English translation of Li Sao. We translate it as Li Sao just, you know, from its pronunciation and we translate into farewell to sorrow. Mm. But there is another translation of Li Sao as encountering sorrow. Mm -hmm. So this is totally different translation and to to interpret that meaning the different mindset mindsets of the translators, their own mindsets. Mm. So I but I think it's I think it's positive. I think it's the different understanding of Li Sao from different perspectives. Yeah. It's not just and about it the be, translation. It's yeah, really it about how much. It can be tolerated. It's not just about yeah. the translation. Mm -hmm. It's only a very minor part of it. But rather, how much do we know mm -hmm. about these poems? You see, David, recently in China, there has been some TV programs going on, even uh, uh, competitions about uh, reciting Asian poems mm -hmm. and yes. interpreting Asian poems, but some say it is only a cultural fad mm -hmm. rather than a urgency of the current generation to go to our roots to really know what is going on and what the civilization has been like. So what do you make of this uh, pop culture picking up 
mm -hmm. ancient poems. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a fad, or could it be a positive beginning yes. of something much bigger? Yeah, I don't know that I would call it a fad necessarily, because it, it, it does come back a, again and again. I think that that, that particular case was a, a certain TV show where they were trying to actually revive a very cherished tradition, which was appreciation of these right. poems. And the, the thing is, when you do that, you actually do uh, highlight for people the actual power and mm -hmm. the, the long-lasting uh, attraction and, and mm -hmm. beauty of those poems. People, people actually, it may be a fad, but in the process of watching that, there will be a group of the audience that will actually become actively engaged and will be, exactly. be, become long-term readers and, and, and rediscover the, 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 these poems. Mm. The, the, the analogy I might give to is in the West is Shakespeare. Mm. You know, most young people don't can't understand Shakespeare. It's old-fashioned language; they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. But I've seen many cases of, of you know a Shakespeare festival, or you know they take a group of kids to a, a Shakespeare festival in the park in New York City, and lo and behold, a certain number of those kids actually find that very compelling and beautiful, and they wow. go back and learn to read Shakespeare. Right. Great. So I mean, it could be a fad, but as long as it has some effect on a small portion of the people, that's a great thing, you know. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Uh, in, in other countries, we see in Ireland, as we mentioned earlier, so-called the Blue Up Blossom Festival, in memory of the main heroes uh, in the Ulysses. That's another festival. But, I mean, Chinese civilization has been there for 5,000 years, as mm -hmm. we have always been talking Proud about. Of, yeah. And yet, how much of those has been with part of our lives? Miss mm -hmm. uh, Han, I'm sure as a Chinese, you can better explain about that. I think it's a, always a good way to understand and to memorize and thinking about some new creative ways to memorize, just as David mentioned, the Shakespeare's mm -hmm. activities. We could also think about some creative activities to memorize that, other than the dragon boat racing activities. You know, one of the things, uh, the talk seems to be in a very abstract way. It, it, it certainly reminds mm -hmm. me of the challenges that the Chinese have these days about our ancient civilization, yes. which is how much do we know. Um, sometimes I have to admit that many of us even have to rely on the English translation to understand at least <laughs> some yeah. specific layers yeah. of the meaning. I'm sure you do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when the ancient script is being presented to you, can you really understand the meaning of it, a hundred percent, or only twenty percent, thirty percent? Of course, yes. that has a lot to do with the evolution of language. But yes. on the other hand, uh, what about that? Using others as tools, mm -hmm. another language as tools, to understand better of your culture. How much will that kinds of reference help us understand about ourselves better? Mm -hmm. And how much will that help us to do cultural comparison better? I think that is also. A, very interesting question. Are you it? asking to use another language to understand our Asian culture, like the modern language? I guess that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very interesting question, like understanding Li Sao. Li Sao is written in definitely an Asian Chinese language. But I think it's easier or maybe better to understand our Asian language by, you know, by learning our Asian language rather than using English to understand that. Mm. Yeah. Well, Interesting said, but <laughs> difficult to do, I guess. I would just make the point that, mm -hmm. and I won't use Li Sao because most people in the West have never heard, yeah. heard of him, it's too difficult. Yes. But, but uh, Li Bai, yes. the most famous Chinese poem, mm -hmm. uh, 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 mm -hmm. that poem has been translated in almost every language. Uh -huh. And actually, my students can get a lot from the English translation mm -hmm. because it's part. It's beautiful in the original, but it's really the images that are so striking that right. that, that resonate with homesickness yeah. and, and with, and it's a wonderful poem. And I think English. I think if a, if a Chinese person can't understand the tongue, you know, vernacular, you could give them an English translation. They could be mm. moved by it. So, yeah. the the real power of the poetry is somewhat independent, somewhat independent of the actual. Language. Nationality and yes. the language itself, and particularly when you have Transcends translation masters mm -hmm. yes. and legends that are having much deeper understanding of its own culture than most of the laymen on the street, and it could be a big help in the further understanding of yeah. our ancient culture. Mm -hmm. Another thing is about Mr. Chu and himself, uh -huh. the fact that he, as an intellectual, has become such a legend in China mm. because of his spirit. 
Um, and he's very strong-spirited, very much against, uh, at the time, the realities of the society. Mm -hmm. Very rebellious one, and even rebellious to the extent that he had to commit himself suicide in order mm -hmm. to make a point mm -hmm. in the society. That practice, of course, is not encouraged, but <laughs> that, yeah. in a way, David, <laughs> has been cherished by Chinese intellectuals throughout dynasties and histories as one who speaks his or her mind and also one who sticks to his or her points mm -hmm. and yes. opinions. Mm -hmm. That is also an interesting part of the history and legends of the Qu Yuan mm -hmm. and of course of the Dragon Boat Festival. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, uh, and the, the importance of Qu Yuan is that his suicide had a great reaction among the people. In fact, the two customs we have of the, the boats actually going to look the for the body, yes. and then the sim symbolism of the zongzi, the, the, the sticky the, rice, the, as the being a, throwing in to keep, make the fish eat the, right. the, the rice instead of yeah. the, the and body. And evil spirits. Yeah. Right, and the evil spirits. So mm -hmm. you, you see the, the people themselves had a, had a great love and resonated mm -hmm. with his action. I think that's kind of the moral of the story for me, is that he not only had principles, but the people saw that in it and, and admired him for mm -hmm. it, and then they were behind him you know, no matter what the uh, the complexities of the political situation mm -hmm. was, they saw his moral clarity mm -hmm. as being something that they should emulate. Right. And Life and May death I in legends that? are not alone here in China, but also right. in many other yes. stories as well yeah. all over the world. Mm -hmm. But what about that point that this is a very strong spirited person? Yes, of and course. And it seemed that specific aspect of his personality yes. is so much appreciated. Yes. by the Chinese throughout history. David sees it not only from a foreigner's perspective, but more of a, a spectator's what about your perspective? observer's mm -hmm. perspective, which is really appreciated. And from Qu Yuan, his own perspective, or maybe from his, you know, the, the, per, the people in his similar period's perspective, he is a minister, remember. He's a noble person, yeah. and he's from the royal family, but he's rem he remains as an independent intellectual at back to his time. And he is a man, stick to his own principles. Mm -hmm. These factors combining together makes him a hero, a very dramatic person back to his time. He is a person stick to his principles and he would sac sacrifice his body to his principles and he mm. He, he put himself in the Milor River. So this makes him a very interesting figure. After all, when we're celebrating this festival, what are we celebrating about? What exactly are the things that has to be with us? I would say that thanks to Qi Yuan, we have three days holiday. <laughs> this is yes. a joke, <laughs> yeah. But thanks to Qi Yuan, I think I would bring my family together and we read Xu Yuan's poem together, and we will see many poets are inspired by Xu Yuan from Tang Dynasty, from Han Dynasty, that we have a lot of traces from Xu Yuan's poems, and we read that, we enjoy that, we appreciate that. Right. Mm. It is really the beginning of another journey every time when we reach this festival mm -hmm. of discovering our own culture yes. and also discovering the beautiful history of Chinese poetry and the beautiful spirits of Chinese intellectuals. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you so much, gentlemen and lady, for being <laughs> with us. Han Hua, yeah. David Moser, really appreciate it. Thank and you. And happy Dragon Boat Same Festival. Same to you.